Hi guys, it's Joe from IC3D. Today we're going to look at how to make a stylized character for Unreal Engine 5. We're going to use a range of tools to make this happen. Thankfully, they're all free and by the end you will have a usable character for your game and animations. They will also have hundreds of ready to go animations. So stay until the end and I'll show you how to use the character in a third person game project. And uh, oh yeah, don't forget to subscribe and uh, all that good stuff. So let's jump straight into it. First, we're going to head over to Ready Player Me, links in the description. This site lets you build stylized characters for a wide range of applications, but today we're using it for Unreal Engine 5. You will need to create an account, but uh, once you've done that, you can jump straight into creating. You can change everything from the sex, face, eyes, hair, facial hair, and of course, the ever important outfits. But uh, what's really cool about these characters is they come with the 52 morph targets. So if you ever wanted to do some facial mocap with them, uh, you have that option. I'm going to spend some time creating a new character here. And once I'm done, I'm going to click on Enter Hub, which is the top right of the screen. Then you can download your character by clicking on the link that says download avatar as .glb file. Next, we need to import the glb file into Blender. Don't worry, this will be a quick and easy process and we won't be in there for long. Ready Player Me does have an SDK for Unreal Engine, but at the moment it's only compatible with UE4. So open Blender and delete everything. Go to File Import GLTF 2.0 and import the file we just downloaded. You can click on the Material view if you want, but that's not necessary. Then go to File, Export and choose FBX. We need to change some settings here uh, before we export. Change the path mode to copy and click on Include Materials button next to it. Change Apply Scaling to FBX Unit Scales and untick Apply Scale. Under the Geometry tab, change Smoothing to Edge and tick Tangent Space. Under the Armature tab, untick Add Leaf Bones. Then you can give the file a name and export it. We will then head over to Mixamo. Again, the link is in the description. And also, you will need an account to do this as well. Upload the FBX file we just created from Blender and wait for it to process. You shouldn't need to do any rigging here and it should go through automatically. Then you can grab a T-Pose and download it. Make sure you have the width skin option selected. Then after that you can grab an idle, walking and running animation. Make sure you have the in place option ticked for the walking and running animations. And for these three animations, you also don't need the skin. So make sure you have the without skin option selected when downloading. We'll use that in our third person controller example in Unreal Engine 5. So in Unreal Engine 5, I've got a new third person project open. And uh, in the new folder, I'm just going to import that T-Pose. I've renamed that T-Pose file uh, to be something more meaningful. So mate, you can do that as well. So in here, all we need to do is make sure we have import target selected. And we also have convert scene unit selected. Everything else should be left as default. And you can click on import. Once that goes through, if you get a warning message, you can just ignore that. The next thing we want to do is import the other three animations. So grab those and drag them into your content drawer. And here you just want to make sure your skeleton is selected from the previous import. And you just need to make sure those other tick boxes are selected and import. Open up the content drawer and open up the T-Pose that we've imported. And if you click on each of the animations, you should see there all working. So next we need to create an animation blueprint so go to create asset and click on animation blueprint. So first thing in here we are going to create a new variable we're going to call it speed and we're just going to change that to a type of float then in the anagraph animation graph we're going to create a new state machine and then we're just going to link those two up and then we're just going to jump into that state machine from entry we're going to drag out a new node and create a new state and we're going to call this idle run we're then going to jump into this idle run state and from here we're going to create a new blend space 1d we're going to link those two up we're going to then get the speed variable and hook that up into the blend space 
and then we're going to jump into the blend space. From here make sure you have the asset browser selected and we're going to drag in the idle animation, the walking animation and the running animation to those spots on the blend space. On the detail section, we're gonna change some settings. We're gonna change the name to speed, which will be our speed variable. And we're going to adjust the maximum axis value to 375. And we're going to change the interpolation speed to five. Can then compile that and you can then save and compile it and then using shift you can preview the blend space animation and make sure it's all working nicely so you should see it uh, slowly adjust between the animations once you've done that you can get out of that and we can go into the event graph from the event blueprint update uh, we can do a set speed and from the try get pawn owner, we can do a get velocity. And from the return value, drag that out and we'll need to convert that to a vector length. And then from the vector length, we can push that into the speed, which will give us our velocity. Save and compile that and your speed should now be getting updated into the blend space. Next, uh, from the world outliner, you'll want to select the third person character blueprint, right click on it and browse to asset. In there, double click on it to open it up and we'll want to jump into the viewport. From here, let's make sure you have the mesh character selected and you want to change the skeletal mesh to the one we've just created and we need to update the animation class to the blueprint animation we just created as well. Save and compile that. Click play and you're done. Now you can run around and you can see your new third person character in motion. Obviously we only have the walk, idle and running animation selected but uh, using the same methods you can go along and add in a jump and a crouch and a attack and a kick or whatever it is you so well please so thanks for watching i hope you learned something until next time guys take care and i'll see you around